All right, everybody, welcome to What It Takes. Man, it feels good to be back with What It Takes, by the way. Guys, my name is Kevin Shaw, and here at Beachbody, we have an entire group of people dedicated to helping coaches just like you reach your potential. If you are diamond or above, check out FAQ 7581 to learn more about how we can help you achieve your goals. Guys, What It Takes is a weekly mini series where we ask the same questions to elite coaches and they talk about, well, what it takes to become an elite coach. Today, we are privileged to be talking with five-star diamond, two-time elite coach and founder of Team VIP, Raquel McAfee. Raquel, welcome to What It Takes. Hello, thank you for having me. You bet, we're thrilled to have you on. Uh, before we get started, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I live in Texas, right outside of Austin. I am a mom of three. I have a daughter who just turned seven and I have twin boys who are four. And I have been a coach. Uh, I'll be coming up on four years at the end of December. Wow. Sounds like a busy lifestyle. Yes, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Good. Okay. So let's get right to these questions. Question number one for you. How were you introduced to Beachbody? I was introduced to Beachbody first through P90X. My husband and I, at the time we were dating and we had a trip to Hawaii. We saw an infomercial, ordered it. Uh, I think we made it about 30 days before we quit. Uh, <laughs> then my next uh, jaunt with Beachbody, I did Insanity with one of my best friends who's now also a coach and co-founder of our team, Jessica. But then I, how I got introduced to the coaching business is through YouTube. I was sitting at work and I was bored and I had hit the ceiling of like what I could make in my job. And I was like, there's got to be something else out there. So I found my coach through YouTube and kind of just researched a ton of Beachbody. Uh, and then I was like, you know what? I'm seeing other people be successful at this. Why not me? I love that story. Everybody, you know, these are all fascinating stories. It's not the traditional way of most people. YouTube, for crying out loud, of all places, YouTube. And, you know, you know everybody knows about P90X, 30 days. Eh, that's all right. Yeah. yeah, no one ever invited me to the opportunity. I wish someone had, but I kind of found it through kind of a back way. <laughs> got the great testimonial as to why you should reach out to everyone. Great job. Okay, moving on to the next question. So now that you're coach and now that you signed up, describe what those early days look like for you. So the early days look like for me, I was working about 50 hours outside of the home. So early days looked like getting up an hour early and staying up in the evenings, not really watching my reality TV, Real Housewives, but really using that time to immerse myself in the business. And that's really what I did. I listened to every single national wake up call on my commute while I'm washing dishes. Um, at the time, my boys were like 11 months old and my daughter was three. And um, my mom used to joke that like their first words are gonna be like coach or beach body because it was constantly, what could I learn? How could I, I didn't know what I was doing. So I just immersed myself into listening and filling myself up with as much belief as possible. So that's kind of what my early days look like for me is just trying to figure it out uh, and just listening to as many national wake up calls as possible. And, and it sounds like doing it when you had uh, these pockets of time, even though you had that busy lifestyle, when you had that free second, uh, they were always, you were always immersed in this. Yes. Any sort of downtime I had, I was listening to YouTube or national wake up call, um, making use of that time. Like I said, and on my commute, washing dishes, folding laundry, I was listening and learning. Coach is watching this. That's exactly what you should be doing. If you're new to beach, but if you're still confused as to what it takes, Raquel just told you right there, there's so much out there, especially on YouTube and uh, national wake up calls that, that we keep repeating ourselves over and over. Get used to, to hearing that stuff. Great, great, great answer. Okay. Um, so what do you feel are some attributes or habits that you have that contribute to your success? I believe the biggest attribute that I have that contributes to my success is my mindset. So I know that's one of those cliche answers, personal development. I'm a huge proponent of personal development, but you can't just read and you can't just listen. You actually have to act on it. And I think that's my biggest thing is I'm constantly retraining my brain, filling myself up with belief. There's millions of ways to grow this business, but if your mindset isn't in the right spot, it's never going to happen for you. Um, so really taking what you learn in your personal development and putting it into action, retraining your brain. I always say, you know, you can't just, 
you know, watch ready for lift off video or read the nutrition guide and be like, cool, I'm good. I'm going to get results. You actually have to like put it into place. You have to follow the plan of what you're reading and what you're listening to. But I truly believe that is my number one attribute for why I've been successful in this business is because I work on my mindset every single day. And it shows your answers are, you're so confident. I love that. Thank so you. I know this is not one of my questions and I apologize to the, what it takes gods out there. Um, but what, you know, everybody know they should take action, but they have that fear. How did, how did you overcome that fear of knowing what you should do and actually doing it? Well, fear is always going to be part of it. I mean, like I, I'm a two-time elite coach and I still have fears. Like still there's, you know, when I have to do something or I have to invite or I have to reach out, it scares me. Like that's just part of it. And I, I wish I could say, Hey, it gets better. But I think there's like an old quote that's like, fear can be in the car with you, but it's got to ride in the back seat. And for me, again, just taking action when you are in that place of like, you know what you should be doing, but you don't really want to do it, but you know, you should, that's when you let fear paralyze you. I feel like the best way to get out of fear is to take action. And then it kind of gets the ball rolling and you're like, Hey, it's actually not that bad. So often if we would just get up and move. We realize what we're fearing isn't actually, you know, valid. It actually won't come to fruition. If you just move and take that action. This is personal and development for me. This is awesome. Good job. Okay. Next question. Uh, what advice do you have for a brand new coach who doesn't know where to start? What can they start doing today to achieve long-term success? get incredible results straight up. I feel like that's it. If you are someone who is brand new, commit to a program, start and finish it. And don't just dabble, go all in and get incredible results. I don't care if you have 50, 100 plus pounds to lose, show people that our products work. Results speak for themselves. Hands down 100%. That should be the first thing that you do. And I would also say share with them excitement. You join this business I'm sure when you started, you were excited, you were nervous, you were anxious, but you had these big dreams. Remember that feeling. Remember, I think every day you got to remember, why did I get into this? What made it fun and exciting and really work on staying in that place? And I think for me, the best way to do that is starting different programs. Um, that's why thank you Beachbody for constantly, you know, dropping a new program. There's no chance for us to get bored. That keeps the excitement alive. But first and foremost, you got to get great results and the rest will come. Yes, to that. Absolutely. Um, I just started a program that I never started and I, I, I feel that same excitement as to why I chose it. Good job. I like that answer. Okay. Um, what about the coach who is struggling or the one who's thinking about giving up? What advice do you have for them? I think struggling is a choice. I think you can choose to stay stuck and feel the struggle. And I'm not to say that I don't have my days where I'm like, man, this is hard. But I have to remember that it is a choice to stay there. And it's a decision that I'm not going to, the only way to fail in this business is to quit. And again, going back to, everyone says, come back to your why, which is great. Absolutely, we have a why, but I think our whys can change. My why from when I started to where is now, completely different. And what motivated me in the beginning isn't what's going to motivate me now. But I have to go back and remember my excitement. Like I said, the enthusiasm that I started with. Why did I, why was I so excited to start this business and go back there? And just know it doesn't happen overnight. I think we're in such a quick fix. We want to like get there already. And, you know, I think what's great about this business, if you consistently show up, consistently being the key, you can't just oh, I'm really going to go hard for my business and then stop and then start and then stop. If you commit right here right now and say, I will until I will do this business until I'm successful, you will blow yourself away. But decide right now, quitting isn't an option. It just never was an option for me. It's never been an option. It's off the table. So if that's the case, what do I need to do until I'm successful? What can I do today? That's what I would say. I, I just don't think failure is an option. You know, I'm going, I am going to Raquel Church. Hallelujah. That was amazing. <laughs> yes. uh, I will until. I really like that. Hey. They, you guys, I, and I, we say this every time on these what it takes calls. The secret is consistency. I can't s spread that enough. The whole what it takes theme of what it takes to become successful, consistency is number one. Now, there's a few other things involved, but consistency is number one because that's 
people are looking for that. Yeah. Uh, they're looking for that in your post. And success comes with consistency. Can't stress that enough. Woo, I am loving this. Okay, um, last question on advice. What is the best advice someone has given you regarding your business? The best advice I've received is that I'm the CEO. When you sign up to be a coach, it doesn't matter who your upline is. You could have signed up with the top coach, but at the end of the day, I'm my own CEO, which means I get to run my business how I want to run it. And it might look different from someone else, and that's okay. But being the CEO, I have to take responsibility for the results in my business. And if I'm not where I want to be yet, it's my job as a CEO to figure out, okay, what can I change up? What can I do better? How can I show up in a better way? What can I do to get the results I want? I think that's key is that no one's going to do this business for you. We are our biggest obstacle, but also our biggest way to lead to success. But I think you always have to remember, it's me. I'm in charge of this. And if I have to do it differently, it's going to look differently. But this is my business and I can do it my way. Love that. I have nothing to say besides love that. Okay, on to the speed round here, Raquel. On average, how much time do you spend working your business per day? So this might surprise some people, but I really only spend about two hours a day on my business. Um, when I first started, like I said, I had little pockets of time. I would get up early and I would stay up late, but I have three kids. I was working full time when I started, and that's all I had. Now, I definitely do have more time to spend on it, but I got in this business for freedom of time and to be able to volunteer at my daughter's school and, you know, be active in my kids' activities. So to this day, I probably only spend about two hours a day. So I just want you to know that because when I would see elite coaches, I'd be like, well, easy for them. They got 12 hours a day to spend on their business. But that if you are efficient in your time and focused, you can get it done. Yes, yes. Relatable. Um, what's your average SC each month? Okay, so this is also going to be super relatable because I'm sure you hear people with these like crazy amazing numbers. Y'all, I'm averaging literally any probably 12 to 16 points a month. Straight up. Good. I think my highest ever was like 21. Um, so again, you can still achieve big things in this business. It might be slower. I might probably have a slower pace than someone who's hitting these outrageous numbers, but I hope that you're hearing how relatable this is and that whatever goal you have in this business, if it's to be elite, it's totally possible. I think the key word you said is consistently. Yes. That's it. Because love is a non-negotiable. As CEO of my business, I've decided no matter what, that just has to happen. So yeah. love it. Uh, what percentage of time do you focus on your own business versus your team? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, I would probably say 60% mine and 40% of my team, which to be honest, it should, I should probably be spending more time on my business, but I love our team so much. And I love that part of it that it's easy to go there. Um, but I should, it should probably be more like 75, 25, but right now I'd say it's 60% my business, 40% my team. Okay. I love the honesty. Uh, and how many coaches do you enroll each month? Probably anywhere from four to six. Okay. There you go, coaches. If you're looking to see what it takes, she's a great example. And she's relatable. She's not way out there. It is time for questions from a hat. This is the most scary question of the whole day. Here is your question for you. That's not too bad. What did you want to be when you were little? Ooh, I wanted to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. <laughs> Wow, how did that come about? Well, I actually did try out back in 2010. I made it to the second round, but I got cuts. But kind of fun story for that, though. In order to train to get my body right, I did insanity uh, to get fit for Dallas Cowboy cheerleader trials. <laughs> I'm so glad I asked that question. I never would have known that about you. Okay, <laughs> guys, what an extremely successful and um, wonderful What It Takes episode here, Raquel. Guys, what I love about this is... 
It's possible. You can do it. You can do what it takes, but it does require that discipline. It does require that consistency and determination that Raquel has. It's so fun to feel this energy. I feel it. I hope you guys do too. We will catch you another week here on What It Takes Raquel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me.